Hello, everybody. We are waiting for everybody to join us. This is News Hour live, with Dr. Zaldivar. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but we're here and we're live now. And we're going to take your questions today. All righty. So here we go. Some of the headlines that we've prepared for you that I think you're going to enjoy learning about. Weight Watchers parent company buys Ozempic, the weight loss drug. And uh, not the, they didn't buy the drug company. They bought a company that mainly focuses on facilitating you, the usage of Ozempic. So uh, shares of Weight Watchers parent company, WW International, surged by 60% after acquiring a $100 million company largely dedicated to helping people get weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Acquisition is expected to boost Weight Watchers' profit when clients stop taking the drug, yes, um, and they want to not regain the weight, then uh, they would be shuttled into the Weight Watchers program. And, you know, just catastrophic headlines as usual, completely un not realizing that Food addiction is real and you can't just take pills and then go and count your calories afterwards. Um, you cannot control physiology that way. That's right, Ayana. Ayana saying Weight Watchers is such a scam. I think they just don't understand the, the true root cause of obesity and overweight, and that is addiction. So another headline, mammoth DNA, you heard that right. <laughs> mammoth DNA is added to plant-based burgers. Woolly mammoths went extinct 10,000 years ago, but that has not stopped companies from reviving the taste of this ancient animal. A Belgian startup company named Paleo, it's, it's weird that they call it Paleo, you'll see why in a second. They say that they've added woolly mammoth DNA to a plant based burger. Why would you want to add woolly mammoth, an animal, DNA to a plant-based burger? <laughs> the mammoth myoglobin gave it a more intense taste and aroma and a richer color, the CEO said. It is unclear, though, when this product will hit the stores. Paleo used precise fermentation along with yeast to produce myoglobin without using any animal cells. They made the mammoth myoglobin using short DNA sequences taken from a 1.2 million year old fossil at the Center for Paleogenetics in Stockholm, Sweden. The company said it developed its mammoth myoglobin two years ago and has patent applications pending. That's right. Actually, there's also another company that's doing the exact same thing. They're also um, developing another uh, mammoth based, plant based food. So, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of uh, that kind of action, even though we know that most companies that are plant-based are really going down. They're not really seeing increases in profits over time. And so the future of these plant-based companies is pretty uncertain. Kathy, my friend goes on Weight Watchers on and off for years, 100%. And that's because they know their rate of success is, I think, is like 5 or 10% similar to pretty much all diets. As a matter of fact, if you look at different statistics for rate of success on a weight loss diet, it's around 2% to 5%. Um, I've never seen data to suggest that any weight loss diet has a higher success rate. And as a matter of fact, um, that kind of mirrors a little bit um, addiction rates of success too, because those are hard things. And unless you understand how to treat them with the right approach, you're always going to go through that yo-yo cycling, right? Where you um, lose the weight, but since you're still dabbling with the sugars and the carbohydrates, then that's going to trigger you into a binge eventually because life happens and stress is the number one trigger for a relapse. And then you're going to go back and regain the weight. And it's so easy to regain the weight back and uh, this is what happens and then you look around you and you see that the obesity epidemic is simply getting worse every single year i mean it's not even leveling off it just keeps going and going up and up um we're not even at a stage where it's it's stable so that at least we have a chance of turning the tide so it's a real problem and companies like weight watchers unfortunately i don't know how how aware they are of the situation, but they are completely going up 
about this thing in the wrong fashion. Um, just counting calories and stressing your your body uh, and restricting the amount of food that you eat while completely being oblivious to the root cause of a food addiction or to the root cause of the problem gives us the results that we're seeing these days, which are just awful. Um, Brandy Kaspersky, these weight loss programs are so hard, as you just mentioned. Once someone stops, the weight just rolls back on, and the majority of the time, they end up gaining back more weight than lost. All the time. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. It's, it's almost as if everybody knows when you have a friend or a family member who goes on a diet and tells everybody, I'm going on a diet. It's like nobody even believes that person um, because we subconsciously, and I think we've seen it so much around us that we we no longer believe that anybody's actually ever going to be successful in actually losing the weight and keeping it off. You can lose weight. Everybody can lose weight in the short term. And they can do it up until a certain point. But almost nobody can maintain that. So it's not the weight loss that's the problem. It is really maintaining that weight loss for a long period of time or forever. And Zigova, true, stress is a big issue and it is easy to fall back into old habits. Yes, stress is the number one trigger for relapse and addiction and also um, in uh, in weight loss, right? Uh, Randy, we need to change our habits, not just go on a fat diet. Yes, 100%. We have to tackle it with the root cause. Yeah, Ayana, weight watchers also have foods that are zero points like <laughs> fruits, vegetables and lean protein. Oh, wow. You can still overeat the fruit. Of course, you give me a bowl of fruit right now. I'll eat the whole thing. It's got a lot of calories. Worse than the calories, it's really, once you've already sensitized the brain to addiction, now fruit all of a sudden becomes a problem. So if you have somebody who is never addicted, never was addicted because they were never given any kind of a drug like sugar from a young age, they could be fine having the fruits um, in, in their diet in terms of overeating, like it, it wouldn't trigger them to overeat. However, the moment you have ingested sugar and developed this addictive dependence on it, now all of a sudden, if you want to be able to cut out the sugar or restrict your caloric intake, now all of a sudden, if you do have fruits, that's going to trigger you for more cravings. Because remember, those fruits that we have nowadays, in our grocery markets, those were never available historically, right? I mean, it's only been in the last 300 years that we've started hybridizing these fruits to increase the amount of sugar and lower the amount of fiber. Because as you lower the fiber content, you increase the sugar content, right? All of a sudden, now it's like a dessert. So never historically did we ever come across a pineapple or any kind of fruit that you see around you? And so to say that that is a natural fruit or a natural food is completely misguided. That is, there's nothing natural about a Franken fruit like that. And so, and it's a problem when we have like around 80 to 85% of Americans having a severe food addiction issue, not even realizing it's a food addiction. It's just look around you and you'll see the cardiometabolic risk factors, right? And nobody wants to gain weight. Most people want to be lean and fit and healthy. It's just that they don't understand what they're up against. They don't understand just how addictive those drugs are. And then they try to go healthy, right? And they try to eat the fruits and the vegetables, not realizing that that's just going to keep the craving going. It'll never end. So yeah, those are a lot of the things that we talk about um, in my support meeting every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern and Thursdays at 12.45 p.m. Eastern. So we talk about all kinds of um, things just like today, you know, about food addiction and support you in, uh, in your carnivore journey and help you troubleshoot your carnivore journey. And especially also if you're struggling to stick with it, I think this is a big one for a lot of people. Um, Brandy, we need da, da, da. Yeah. Weight Watchers. Yeah, Car Carrie, my question has to do with losing weight and I've been able to maintain it. Okay, that, what, what's the question, Carrie? Um, what are ways we can help curb cravings? Brandy, fantastic question. <laughs> to curb cravings, you really want to cut out carbs and the sweet taste. That is the biggest number one thing. We can go a few levels deeper than that, but the, the thing that seems to be the worst 
on the scale of addiction is anything that has carbohydrates in it. So flowers, um, all kinds of flowers. So um, things like grains, like rice and pasta, they turn into sugar almost immediately and they influence your blood sugar. So your blood sugar goes up really high and then your body freaks out because high blood sugar destroys every aspect of your body from your blood vessels to your cellular membranes, everything, collagen matrix, every everything in your body. So your body really wants to try and clear it out really quickly. And so it releases a lot of insulin, which drops your blood sugar. And so after that blood glucose goes up, your insulin drops it below baseline. And that drop below baseline, it happens so many times during the day. Every time you eat carbs, it goes up and then there's a drop. It goes up and then there's a drop. And so the whole day you're riding a roller coaster for blood sugar imbalances, right? And so every time you have that drop, it's really a tiny drop. But it's right below that baseline, what it was before you had that carbohydrate rich snack. Every time you have that tiny little drop, that is one of the strongest drivers for appetite and cravings. And this is why even a little bowl of rice can set you off, you know, on a uh, trigger cravings and set you off on a binge. And so the number one thing that you want to do is eliminate all carbs and all artificial sweeteners. In the studies where we see the addictive potential of food, we know that artificial sweeteners are far more addictive than heroin by a large margin. Not, not just, it's not as addictive as heroin. No, the sweet taste is far more addictive than heroin by a large margin. If that doesn't give you the chills, then I don't know what does. Okay. Um, Kathy, it has to be a way of eating for the rest of your life. Agreed. I have been doing carnivore. Yes. You can, the way that I approach it with my clients and, and my, again, those group meetings that we're holding them twice a week, it's, we talk, we talk about food from an addiction standpoint. So we talk about sobriety and we talk about how can we stay sober with regards to food, you know? And so just like if, if we have an addiction to sugars and carbohydrates, it's worse than if you were shooting heroin. Those are what the studies are showing so far, you know, and I and I've been going very deep into the addiction medicine research and talking with the heads of addiction, the world leaders of addiction. You can see it on my channel. And uh, everybody agrees it's so much easier to get sober from alcohol, heroin and cocaine. The hardest addiction to kick is food addiction, especially carbohydrate addiction. So, um, so that's how we approach it. We approach it from, from a sobriety perspective. So yeah, you want to think of yourself as a recovering addict. So you don't go back and you dabble. You don't cheat with sugar. You don't cheat with carbs. Those are triggers, right? Just like a heroin addict that's in recovery, they don't go and shoot a little bit of heroin on a weekend just to, in order, you know, so, so my cheat, my cheat little meal. <laughs> you can't do that. I've been doing carnivore for one and a half years. Kathy, that's fantastic. And we'll be eating this way forever. Um, amazing. Same thing. Ayana Pilar. Um, that's awesome. So proud of you, Ayana. Doris Day, I'm 97% strict carnivore. I have one 12 ounce mocha per day, but want to quit. The addiction is strong. Oh, Ayana, you can tell Doris <laughs> what it took to finally get you off the sugar. Um, Carrie, I don't diet. I have never dieted. I have chronic gastritis, so I can only eat small bites without feeling nauseous, right? Um, Carrie, but I also roller skate every day, which has been a long journey. I refuse to weigh myself and base my happiness on a number. Good. Hey, everyone. Uh, the old you versus the new you. Hello, the healing heartland. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Carrie, my question is that I keep he hearing I can only maintain that for so long. Um, yeah, well, that's when in the earlier stages of um, in the earlier stages of a carnivore diet, whether you're really conscious what you're doing or not. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just doing car carnivore. It's like, it seems like it's going to be the solution. What they don't realize is they're actually facing their addiction for the first time. Because when you were keto, you were still doing keto treats and keto things. And so you were still in that addictive mode. But when you go carnivore, you can't, you can't do the addictive stuff. Unless, of course, you're doing the fruits and the honey, then that's, that's a whole other topic. We're not going there. Let's say you're doing a strict carnivore without any plants and no honey. 
so for a lot of you, this is the first time you're actually facing addiction head on, right? The, the biggest thing with the earliest stages of recovery is grief and mourning. So when people say this, I can only do this for so long, it's because they're still mourning the loss of their drug because they haven't figured out a way to replace that high that is artificial with a high that is natural, right? And because that takes a little bit more work. It takes more emotional work to understand what really makes you happy. You have to set boundaries with toxic relationships, toxic situations. I mean, there's so many things. And I don't want to make it to seem like it's so complex. It's really not. It's a simple drug. You get it out of your life and life gets 100% better, you know? But at the same time, you can make things so much easier on you by by looking at all of you know the things that you got to change in order to naturally be high because that high is actually far more beautiful and can last all the time whereas a high from a drug like sugar lasts a short period of time and then dissipates and over time as the addiction takes hold you don't even get that high you're just take, you're just using the sugar to offset withdrawal symptoms which is basically all all drugs of abuse uh, once you get addicted to them it's like like the heroin addict right they're not using to get high anymore they're just using in order to prevent the awful withdrawal effects um the old you versus the, the new you how do you lose weight when you have thyroid or digestive issues um well carnivore helps your thyroid and i mean it is our species specific diet i've had so many clients that have completely gotten off thyroid medication cleared their SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, cleared candida. I've even reported on my YouTube channel how candida um, was cured on only 43 days on an all meat diet. So you can check that, you know, if you just Google that, those things, it'll show up. And I have, I always link the references to the studies whenever I'm talking about a new study. So you can check the reference also in the uh, description box. Ayana, maintain what for so long? Ayana, oh, weight loss. Okay. Ayana, basically what she's saying now. Okay, <laughs> Carrie. So this is where my confusion is. Beyond keep losing weight, obvious it will plateau, but I live off of mashed potatoes and snow cones. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Who's eating the mashed potatoes? <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta we got to get you off the carbs. Uh, what are your thoughts on alcohol? Alcohol is a toxin, right? Um, I don't drink, um, not because, you know, for me, alcohol, I don't have any, any personally addiction to it. Um, it just doesn't do anything for me. And I don't like the feeling. And um, it really messes with like the next day, even let's say, even if you don't have like an addiction to alcohol, right? You're a social drinker. The problem with being a social drinker is that alcohol is liquid sugar. And so it turns into sugar. And so first, it's a major trigger. When you're drinking, it's going to affect your blood glucose level. It's going to be a major trigger. It's very hard just to not have cravings when you are drinking. And worse is the next day, you have impaired judgment and you have way more cravings. So it's just going to be very, very hard to enjoy being a carnivore if you are drinking. So again... I, I, I live a sober life. I recommend a sober life. You really don't need any substances in any way, shape, or form to, to live our best lives ever. And although I lost a lot of weight, what food is best for energy as I feel tired most of the time? Well, generally fat, you want to make sure you're getting enough fat. And also, are you training hard? You know, if you're not training, I see this very commonly um, in the carnivore community because the weight loss can come so easy for us that we feel like we don't have to train. Um, but I think the exercise has just, again, I mean, I'm biased. My PhD was in exercise physiology and nutrition. And so uh, I there's so many benefits to exercise. But the number one thing is that it boosts your energy so that at baseline, you, you're just more powerful, you know, like you walk different when you're a lifter, when you have enough muscle on you, the way you move in the world is different. So I recommend that a lot. The healing heart land experience. Um, I had extreme food addiction, 385 pounds. I've lost 200 pounds from gastric bypass. Have you talked about transfer addiction? Oh, that's a good one. So yeah, it's called aid addiction interaction disorder. I felt it and um, know many people who suffer from transfer addiction. Yeah, rates of 
of alcoholism and shopping addiction go skyrocket after people get um, bariatric surgery. And uh, that's because you still have destruction of your neurochemicals and your neurotransmitters. You haven't addressed that. You haven't addressed it. You didn't put a, pl a plan in place to restore them. Just doing the um, bariatric surgery is not going to restore those receptors, those neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitter receptors in your brain. And so if you're still having an addicted brain, it's going to try and desperately hang on to any which way it can uh, to achieve that dopamine hit to get the that neurotransmitter. So yeah, I do talk about that actually um, a lot. I mean, especially recently, I've really started focusing so much on addiction because I finally realized like, that is the future. <laughs> that is the future of health and fitness. We can talk about carnivore all day long. People can't stick with it. You know, if people could stick with it, then the whole, you know, we, we would have 300 million Americans um, with, with walking around with abs, right? <laughs> so it's, it is the addiction component. It is, it is, it is the, the answer to everything, in my opinion. Ayana, Dr. Sarah's monthly meetings helped me so much. Thank you so much, Ayana. I'm, I'm having a new, uh, uh, new people reach out to me so we're gonna have more company um this this next sunday again it's sundays at 9 a.m and thursdays at 12 45 p.m brandy would you recommend someone gradually come off sugar or would it be easier to quit cold turkey oh i love this question brandy so okay generally speaking i would say just quit cold turkey but it would definitely make it a lot easier on your body to taper down gradually. So instead of that, so in so let's say you're having I don't know 300 grams of carbs. If that, if you're inputting it on my fitness pal, that would really help us know exactly the grams of carbs you're eating a day. Whatever amount of carbs you're having, right? If you just cut that by half every single day, by the end of the week, you will reach on almost zero grams of carbohydrates. And that would be like day one of sobriety, right? And so I've done it both ways. Um, to be honest, it's easier. I, I've realized that when I've done it, you know, tapered down, it was just, it kept me in the addiction world for too long. And it's actually a lot harder to do so. So uh, I've noticed that it's actually far, far easier to just to take a few days off. If you can take um, like, like four days off, of work that would help so much that way you can take baths you can take massages you can go on walks and you can put a food addiction podcast so that you're immersed in that and so that you get reassurance that you're not losing your mind in those first few days where you have to go through with the withdrawals i think it's so much easier really that's all it takes just a few days and uh and after that i'm not gonna lie um it's gonna be hard for the first two to three weeks but once you're out of there it gets so much easier. So yeah, I would say, you know, as if you're thinking about it, just go ahead and start taper down today and tomorrow and then just go cold turkey and do zero. Because then, because it's like, okay, anytime you, you have a question about diet, replace the food with heroin. Would it be better to taper down on your heroin shooting or would it be best to go cold turkey, right? So I would say cold turkey would be the, the best answer here. Ayana, Doris, I'm sweet taste free. That's right. No more. We, we got her off of artificial sweeteners. And it takes a while, but it can happen. I devour the information Dr. Sarah Zaldivar gives along with the other heads of addiction. Like I listen all day, every day. Exactly. And that, you know, that's what I recommend. Like you have to go all in, especially in those first 21 days. So when I did it, when I got sober, and I mean like no, no more artificial sweeteners, none of that stuff. I would literally listen to those addiction interviews. And there are a ton of them. I actually have a playlist. If anybody's interested, shoot me an email at drsarahzaldivar.gmail.com. I'll send you the playlist. It's unlisted, um, but I add to it every interview with a world leader of sugar addiction that I think can help my clients. And I share it with all my clients and my group, meet a group and support um, uh, members. So, um, and I tell them like, you got to immerse yourself with this because everybody around you is completely aloof to this information. <laughs> you know, first of all, you might be living with somebody who's not an addict to food. 
And so they don't understand what you're going through and they think you're just being dramatic. You know, you you probably have tried to lose weight all your life and gone through weight cycling and yo-yo cycling. Um, and uh, eventually that led you to lose credibility with everybody around you. So you tell everybody this, I, I want to clear the house from all this thing and nobody takes you seriously anymore because you have proven in the past that you just simply cannot achieve those goals that you've said you wanted to achieve when it comes to your diet. So this is why having the support, whichever way you can get it, is so critical. So when I when I did it, what I was saying before I went off on a different route, <laughs> when I went sober, I would wake up. Actually, I still do it to this day. I, 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 I keep the maintenance going. Eventually, you can taper down the frequency of listening to these interviews. But but um, the more you can focus on that, especially in the initial few months, the better. So what I did in the beginning and what I continue to do when I wake up in the morning, even when I'm making the bed, I have a podcast on and I speed it up a little bit like times one and a half speed or times two. And I'm constantly listening to, to interviews with the addiction about addiction, about a food addiction with Dr. Vera Tarman, Bitten Johnson, Mike Collins, um, uh, Robert Lustig, Gary Tobbs. I mean, there's so many great, fantastic interviews on the Internet. Take advantage and immerse yourself with this in information. It's just going to make things so, so much easier. I can't I can't even stress how, how much easier it gets. Oh, yes, Ayana, I also do intense exercise. We've been talking, we were talking about this in our group meeting this morning, the, the, the importance of intense exercise. Go to my YouTube channel. The, the last two YouTube videos, you're going to love them if you're interested in food addiction, because I talk about how exercise restores the the deficiencies in neurotransmitters. So this is unfortunately what a bariatric surgery uh, didn't do, right? It it completely for it completely missed its aim. The the aim should have been brain restoration, brain rehab by doing intense cardio. And not that weight training isn't fantastic, and I definitely recommend weight training, but it is the cardio that seems to regenerate our dopamine receptors so that it's as if we didn't have the the addiction ever. So you don't have cravings and you don't have withdrawals. You can actually even prevent yourself from having cravings and withdrawals, even in the initial phases of getting sober and taking out the sugar from your diet and the carbs, just by doing intense cardio. The more intense the cardio, there's a direct proportion with how much more dopamine receptors and dopamine activity you're now having, even at rest, you know? So if you if you were interested in that topic, go to my YouTube channel. Um, the last two YouTube videos are about addiction. The the one right, the one that's not an interview is the one where I talk about how addiction, uh, how exercise heals the brain. Because here's what, here's what happens. If you don't work out, it'll take two years for your brain chemistry to go back to normal. Two years. When that means is that you have two years where you're kind of like a sitting duck waiting for that craving to hit you at any point in time. So what I'm saying is that we don't want to wait for that episode of craving to hit us during a, on a very stressful day because that def, that's definite relapse what i what i'm saying is that i'd rather be ahead of the curve and bring upon myself some physical and emotional suffering in the form of pushing myself on the treadmill or on whatever cardio you choose and that that the pain that you feel from pushing yourself uh, in in pushing your boundaries of physical fitness is going to be the trigger to create more dopamine receptors, if that makes sense. Joseph, I just jumped in. Hello from Utah. Hello. Been carnivore for three plus years. Keto before that. It was hard to let go of my last sweet stevia. It took me about two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, fantastic. I'm so glad you took it out. The healing heartland experience. Oh, absolutely. I went into grief once I couldn't get my food fixed. Exactly. I had to write a breakup letter to unhealthy food. Good. Gut health and mental health is so very close. How can changing your diet help? Well, that we call our gut the second brain, right? 90% um, of serotonin is made in your gut and 50% of dopamine is made in your gut. So if you don't have healthy bacteria living in your gut, that's going to, via the vagus nerve, which is this highway nerve that connects your brain and your gut, that vagus nerve is going to be stimulated in a way to cause inflammation in your brain. Um, even things like beans and the, the lectins found in beans and plant foods can literally, we have like actual pictures showing how lectins can travel via the vagus nerve and reach the dopamine producing cells in your brain and destroy the dopamine producing cells in your brain. And uh, they've done that especially for Parkinson's because one of the uh, major uh, causes of Parkinson's disease is the destruction of those dopamine um, producing cells in the brain. 
Um, okay, what else do we have? Future of Health Network. I had someone ask about the long-term effects using carnivore. Well, the long-term effects, effects is that you keep getting healthier and younger over time. <laughs> yes, please like the video, like, share, do all, all the good stuff. We're growing the Future of Health Network. Ayana, yes, I grieved my sweet taste too, but I'm getting over it. Yes, you're doing so well, Ayana. I'm so proud of you. Emily, hi, Joseph. Three and a half years in carnivore is awesome. I am two and a half years in. That's amazing. Okay. Um, do we have more questions? Emily, agreed. Support called help so much. Community is the opposite of addiction. Right. And so why we're pushing support on you so much? <laughs> because there's a very good reason. <sighs> okay. In addiction... You, the part of the brain that is hijacked is this here, like in the middle, it's called the, the basal ganglia. So what happens is that it strengthens. So now you have really thick neural connections in that area. And what it does is that it pulls the blood and the connections away from the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain right behind your forehead, which is where you make decisions critical thinking, willpower, discipline. So now this is not active, right? And by the way, this has evolved only in the last 130,000 years. So that's that's like in, in a second, and like in the last second in terms of like evolution on a, if we're taking the evolutionary timeline, that would be like in the last second only did we have this uh, prefrontal cortex form. So it is the the most vulnerable of our brain it hasn't had enough years to to become strong and um, powerful versus 98 percent of the rest of our brain that has been there for millions of years and so it's already vulnerable and now with the drug you you're pulling every time you 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 get addicted to something and the more severe the addiction gets the less activation you have in your willpower part. And so you really don't have almost any willpower left. You, you think you do you try to justify your actions, but you really don't. And the addiction pathway gets really strong. And so why is it that we push support meetings? It's because we have mirror neurons that allow us to kind of mimic other people. And it's a very strong drive in all of the human beings. And especially if you're watching people around you and you, you, you connect with them or you know who they are and they're doing something, you will really, really want to follow what they're doing. It'll become much easier to do what they're doing. And so the support meetings where you have a bunch of people that are doing the sober life. And so now if you interact with them and you see them, even via Zoom, the mirror neurons work via Zoom. Now you have this drive, this like, uh, um, what's the word? Primal, this primal drive that is so strong, that's active. And now it's working in your favor. It doesn't require the prefrontal cortex because this is offline for now until the, those two years pass, until the brain heals itself. And so this is why this is so critical that you get all the support that you can have. And unfortunately, most of us don't have that support from friends and family because they're still in denial. Denial is a major hallmark of addiction, right? And so they're either in denial or they, you've lost credibility with them. They're not supporting you anymore. Or some people are even actively trying to sabotage you so that they, so that if you get better, the, you know, limelight now is, is uh, by comparison, you can, you know, very clearly see that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So there are so many reasons. So this is why you need to activate those. You want to take advantage of the only part of the brain that's strong enough to oppose that kind of a severe addiction, like food addiction. It is, it is absolutely the single hardest addiction to break, much harder than heroin. Um... Joseph Bates, diabetics need to take care of taking meds when reducing carbs. Yeah, that's true. Uh, hi from Brazil. Hello, Carol. Carol. Brandy, hello, Carol. Okay. Uh, hello, all. Please share and press the thumbs up. Yes, give us a like. Share. The Healing Heartland Experience. I'd love help with this. I definitely want to get sober. Yes, fantastic. Come join us in the support groups. We share gems all the time. Sean, does that apply to alcohol? Yes. When I talk about addiction, it doesn't matter what the substance is. It's all the same. The mirror neurons, everything I'm talking about, the support groups, yes. The exercise, regenerating D2 receptors, yes. It doesn't matter 
what kind of addiction you have, the root cause is the destruction of D2 receptors. So as long as we can fix those D2 receptors, um, it doesn't matter what drug you're using. And this is why, again, we talked about aid, um, addiction interaction disorder. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like if you take, if, if you if you cut someone's stomach off in a bariatric surgery, you took the sugar away, they're still addicted. They're just going to shift their addiction from food to shopping or to alcohol or to something else. Randy, do you need to take certain supplements when on the carnivore diet? No, there are a lot of very long-term carnivores that don't take any supplements. You absolutely don't need to take any. Pat, would people become addicted to potato chips because of MSG ingredient? Yes, absolutely. And not only that, it's carbs plus fat plus salt. Brittany, I was informed it takes the receptors 10 plus years to return to normal. Yes, you are. It is accurate, Brittany. I don't like to say the 10-year mark because it scares people away. <laughs> but if we want to get technical, yes, it can take up to 7 to 10 years for that last 5 to 10% of healing of the D2 or dopamine receptors to take place. However, after two years, the vast majority of the brain has healed, like 90%. And I think that, you know, healing yourself after two years with a 90% regeneration of D2 receptors is fantastic. Now, here's the thing. You can speed up that process. As fast as you want to simply by manipulating the intensity of your cardio. The more intense your cardio, the faster that healing process is happening. So you can do it in six months. You know, it doesn't have to be two years. Joseph, I would love to see the data paper about two years to get you head on straight again. That sounds fascinating. I'd like to share that info. Yes, absolutely. I will look into the, the that stuff and put it out. Um, just keep, stay tuned. Like with my Instagram and my YouTube, I share all this stuff. Um, the reason why, that this is actually why for severe addictions, the gold standard treatment, according to the world leader in sugar and food addiction, Dr. Joan Iflin, that, this is my last interview on my YouTube channel. I, I interviewed her uh, and this is the last video is posted. And uh, she, she is literally only one of two people in the world with a PhD in nutritional addiction. Actually, my PhD was also in nutritional addiction. It was on sugar addiction. I should have mentioned, actually, you should add me to the list. <laughs> So she said that the gold standard treatment for addiction is that they put uh, people away for um, two years. You have to literally go in, uh, in a program away from anything and anybody in order to have enough, uh, in order to have no triggers, no cues whatsoever for two years straight until the, the D2 receptor regeneration happens. Obviously, we can't send what, how many, we have hundreds of millions of Americans that have this addiction. So this is definitely not feasible. So what's the second best thing is total immersion support groups and relying on our mirror neurons. And I would add my approach. I would add also cardio. Um, the healing heart. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this information. Thank you. Uh, yes. Support us. Press the like and su subscribe button. The old you versus the new you. I have a situation situation where because of throat issues to where I can't swallow meats, what alternative, what could I eat that would be healthier for me? Hmm, maybe fish for a short period of time. I'm not sure um, why exactly or what the throat issue is. Um, if you can share, maybe I can help you more. But, you know, maybe maybe fish might be easier and eggs, you know, to, to swallow. Carol, eating carnivore affect cancer? Ooh, that's a fantastic question. I did an interview with the world leader um, in cancer research who is completely uh, researching cancer from a completely different paradigm than the vast majority of medical schools and researchers, and which is that cancer cannot survive without glucose, right? And so he utilizes and researcher researches ketogenic diets, of which obviously carnivore is a ketogenic diet, and how it can starve the cancer. And he's getting amazing results. So I would check him out. His name is Dr. Thomas Seafried, T H O M A S Seafried S E Y F R I E D. So I did an interview with him, and then afterwards, also Dr. Anthony Chafee invited him, and he interviewed him as well. So check both interviews; they're gold. Brittany, many people ask why addiction is considered a disease. Hmm. I don't like to call it a disease, although sometimes we have to, yeah, it is considered a chronic progressive disease because as you build tolerance, it gets worse as, uh, as time goes on and as you age. Uh, but yeah, I don't like to call it a disease simply because um, like 30 to 40% of us are born with this vulnerability. It's, uh, it's called the DRD2A1 allele. It's the gene that, uh, that we carry 
and it codes for around 40% less D2 receptors. So we come to this world not having enough dopamine receptors. Um, and so this is why they call it a disease because it sets us up because only if you have this gene will you have an easier time developing an addiction to either food or alcohol or whatever, whatever drug it, it is. It's called the re reward deficiency syndrome if you want to check it out. Future, hello, the old you. Uh, please like and subscribe. Next live, we'll have some great guests. We'll have some tech issues. Yeah, sorry, guys. We had some, we were really trying to figure out this live. I've never done a live before, so we're really, I'm doing this for the first time. And so we were a little bit late on you. Sorry, won't happen again. Tara by Tiana, sugar is so toxic, 100%. I'm still withdrawing from sugar. Yeah, it, again, it can take, especially that first month, you know, but um, here's the thing. <laughs> this is why it, ta it takes two years, right? So after the immediate acute effects of withdrawals, which take like uh, take place in the first two, three weeks or the first month, then you have something called pause, which is called post-acute withdrawal syndrome, which means you're still going through withdrawals and this is when they come at you. You don't know when you're like a sitting duck. And so again, this is why I talk about cardio so much. I don't want you to be sitting ducks, not knowing when that withdrawal is going to hit you, when that craving is going to hit you. What if you have an important engagement? You can't, be, and it's stressful. Like you, you can't, you can't take the chance of relapsing six months after you got sober, you know? You'll never be done with this. And so this is why the cardio is so crucial. Anything to ramp up due to receptor density. Brittany, can carnivore cause gout? Absolutely not. Since eating a lot of red meat is a cause of gout. No. People and doctors like unfortunately think that meat, because it's high in purines, causes gout. They forget that the actually what erases uh, purines is our body. We can actually create purine. You know how we create more purine when we eat more sugar. So, yeah. Vera, hello for Panama. Interesting program. Hello, Vera from Panama. Thank you so much. The old you versus the new you. I'm also allergic to seafood now. Yeah, it's okay. Steak is better. Uh, hello, Tiana. Carol, if I don't want to do full carnivore, can I still add some veggies? Yeah, but why would you want to do that? I mean, in terms of food addiction, yeah, veggies are, are going to be the least addictive on the spectrum of addiction. But why, why would you want to add that over time? Even if you have no symptoms coming from vegetables, almost everybody as we age starts to react to vegetables because they have plant self-defense chemicals. So eventually you're just going to have to start having joint pain, knee pain, all, or, or, you know, so many things. Just why, why add them? Joseph, I have a food question for you. I eat sardines daily for DHA and EPA. I know they don't have mercury, but had they, but do, uh, but the, do they have arsenic problem? Mm, they might. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to have to look into um, how they rank on their arsenic content. I'm not sure. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that. But if they do, then yeah, obviously, then that's a heavy metal that can accumulate over time. The old you versus the new you, my thyroid is swollen to the point that it's hard for me to eat any type of meat. Oh, it's the thyroid that's swollen. So um, like, a, are you talking about a goiter? Is that like an iodine deficiency? So I would treat that first. The best way to treat it is to cut out the, uh, you know, plants and just eat a strict carnivore diet. But I would also check for heavy metal toxicity. You know, there's a few other things that go into that. Yes, I, I love all your questions. That's fantastic. Thank you all. This is almost an hour. We were going to do like half and we were going to do like a, a quick little Q&A, but um, really had a lot of engagement. So thank you so much. They don't know yet. Oh, OK. Yeah, you got to really figure out like the root cause almost always, I would always revert back to eating our species specific diet. Pat, can allergy to sulfites and sulfates cause high cholesterol and sleep apnea and weight gain? They can cause a lot of things. I don't know. If, if, I'm sure it can cause the sleep apnea. Um, not so sure about the high cholesterol. I haven't come across that. Um, but yeah, just stick with fresh meat, you know, stick with fresh meat. Uh, we missed your guest. Yes, I know. Right. So, um, I was supposed to have uh, Jessica Randall with me. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't make it. Well, I couldn't figure out how to invite her to the live. I'm not Jessica. Sorry, guys. Jessalyn. Jessalyn Randall. Um, she's just an amazing person. We did an interview together, and it was so, so good. It's on my YouTube channel. And uh, let me stop this. I don't know if you can.
Okay. I, I had this thing that removes the blue light. It's like a blue light filter. So the screen was turning yellow. <laughs> so Jessalyn Randall was supposed to be my guest and we we're supposed to take your questions together. Maybe we'll do that another time, but we, I didn't, I wasn't able to figure out how to do this live. Remember, this is my first live ever on YouTube. I do a lot of lives on Instagram, but this was the first time I do it on YouTube. So we couldn't figure it out on time, unfortunately. Next show, that's right. Hey, you're here, Jocelyn. I'm watching. Hello. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me happy. <laughs> I wish you were here with me in the frame. But um, we're going to, we're actually, me and Jocelyn also are going to be doing an Instagram live, right, Jess? Really soon. I'm not sure when. I think in a few weeks. Um, yeah. So what else do we have? I think. So we've been we've been here for 45 minutes. Um, thank you all for your questions. Um, don't forget, I have the group support meetings. It's actually coaching slash support. So, you know, I, I also try to coach you if you have questions and try to guide you with the best thing to do. And also um, we share our challenges and I uh, troubleshoot that for you. So whether you're just wanting some accountability or you're wanting to just um, troubleshoot your carnivore journey, or you understand the addiction and you really want to get sober. And usually that's, that's the reason why most people um, can't stick to carnivores, that, that addiction element that isn't being uh, really targeted head on. So what, what, for whichever angle you want to tackle it, come join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern and also every Thursday at 12.45 p.m. So you can choose to take just one meeting a, 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 month, a week or uh, two meetings per week. And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's really important. And it activates your mirror neurons. It is your really strong defense uh, as, that, you know, you can take advantage of until your brain heals. Thank you, everybody. Jess, we'll figure it out one day. I'm sure we will. Jess, yes, I'm in a couple of weeks. Yes, our Instagram live, me and Jessalyn Randall in a couple of weeks. Jessalyn is right now in Japan. Thanks so much, everyone. Please share. Yes, share, like, support the future of health and network. We have a lot of um, hopes for it. Jess is awesome. Yes, we do. I, I, love, I love her videos and I love her Instagram. You need to check her out. She's amazing and very funny too. <laughs> Please like and share. Thank you, Ayana. You're still here. Thank you, everybody. All righty. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I love you all. And I hope to see you in the coaching um, support meetings. And yeah, I'm going to call it night. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, you can do this. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Brandy. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Jessalyn, Ayana. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Anne. Goodbye.